Hey guys, we're getting to another episode of When the Scriptures Become Real. It's going to podcast where we learn, where we study, where we grow. Uh, we try to become the best versions of ourselves as we can as we continue to serve our Lord. Again, you can find the podcast on YouTube. You can also find the podcast anywhere that you can get your podcast. And we're so thankful uh, that you guys are with us and you found the podcast today. So today I had a um, I had a podcast in mind to do. And if you saw on social media, I had a, a couple topics, but I'm just not ready for those yet. Um, I'm still, you know, marinating on those. So we'll we'll kind of see um, when we can do that. But but right now, um, we'll we'll do another one. And so uh, this is going to be a little bit different um, because I'm just going to be honest with you all. If you're watching the video portion or, or you're just listening, I don't have any notes on what I'm about to do right now. So if it sounds <laughs> Uh, if it doesn't sound as organized as before, it's not. But sometimes, as one instructor said, sometimes you just got to go off the overflow. You know, sometimes you just got to, uh, you know, you'll let the, the scriptures talk off overflow. So that's what we're going to try uh, right now. Um, but as I as I talk about this today, here's a topic that I want to um, bring up to you guys. It's a topic of, can you guys just pray for me? Can you guys just pray for me? Um, you know, yesterday I had the the privilege to uh to preach and and we talked about becoming a better friend to Christ. And before we can become a better friend to him, we have to understand that we need him and that we need his help. And uh all of us, you know, not just ministers, but all of us as we're as we're walking this Christian walk and as we're we're trying our best wherever we are, whether that's at work or school or college or, you know, newly married, whatever it is, you know, every situation in every phase in life, there's always a challenge. Um, there's always an, ob- an obstacle to overcome. You know, there's always adversity. There's always issues. There's always problems. But when that happens and, you know, all of us can almost try to take on too much or try to do everything on our own and so instead of you know asking for help sometimes we'll just kind of take that mantle and try to bear all those burdens on our own you know so you know we become very uh short with people hey how you doing Uh, i'm good hey you need anything nope let you know hey is everything all right yep it's all good you know you know the you know you're you're in that when the answers that you give people are like pretty short but, you know, as you talk about this, you know, as as humans, you know, we were meant to be helped. You know, we need help. And so as we talk about this topic, man, can you guys just pray for me? All of us can say that. And so <clears throat> as we talk about this, the first thing about prayer is is praying for your brethren can be the most amazing thing ever. But sometimes that's an avenue that we just don't really use that much. If you really think about it, you know, obviously the the only times that we really, you know, consistently pray is, you know, Sunday morning prayers, obviously prayers for communion, prayers, any prayer during service that's consistent and then meals. But think about it, like how often do you pray for real? You know, that's our communication line between God. That's our that's our line uh, to speak to him, to, to talk to him, to let him know the things that are going on. So, I mean, let's look at this. I mean, just offhand, um, let's look at uh, Romans. <clears throat> Romans chapter, um, let me make sure I have the right text here. I believe it's chapter 8. I want to make sure I have the right text here. Yeah, Romans chapter 8. And let's begin in verse number, actually, We need to jump up, to be honest. Let's jump up to verse 24. So Romans 8, and let's jump up to verse um, verse 24. But again, before we look at this, there's a lot that we need to understand uh, about what's going on here. But specifically, let's go back actually to Romans chapter 4. So to understand Romans 8, we got to understand Romans 4. So look at look at Abram's situation. Obviously, God told him he have a son, right? And Abram's waiting year after year after year. But in in Romans chapter four, beginning in verse seventeen, the Bible says, "As it is written, 
I've made thee a father over many nations. Before him who he believed even God, who quickens the dead, and who calls those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope. Here's the thing, guys. This is this is one reason why we need to pray for each other. Because there's some of us, and really all of us, but some of us, if you haven't been here, then you'll you'll get here in life. Where sometimes you'll be in a situation where you have to believe against hope. And what do I mean by that? There's certain things in life that happen to where, and it's natural, and it's okay, because that's the natural course of life. Sometimes things happen for others quicker than it happens for you, and that's okay. But our 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 uh, responsibility is to rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. But sometimes when you talk about hoping against hope, sometimes for some, you have to hope against things that just haven't happened. So, I mean, constant, you know, you're looking for a job, constant rejection. You know, you're looking for certain things, constant rejection. You're looking for, it just doesn't work. And so for some people, they're stuck in a portion of their lives where they're tired of hoping. You know, I was thinking about this the other day, believing and hoping. That's a hard thing to do when you just don't have any belief and hope left. So what are you believing in? You know, what are you hoping in? Sometimes you just, sometimes as I sit and, uh, or I'm working or I'm doing something, sometimes you sit and you think, what am I believing in? What am I hoping in? What am I hoping for? And so sometimes we're put in situations where maybe not as bad as Abram, but sometimes we hope against hope. We haven't seen it happen. It hasn't happened up to this point. You know, he says he hoped against hope that he might be the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. So then let's jump back to Romans chapter 8. This is why prayer is so important. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters, not not just those that are struggling with all of them, but specifically here, we need to pray for those that are hoping against hope right now. You know, look at look at Romans 8, starting in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit, he helps our infirmities, for sometimes we don't even know what to pray for as we ought to. You know, have you ever tried to have a conversation but you just didn't know what to say. I, I just don't want to mess it up. You know, I just don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to say, you know, not enough. You know, I just don't know what to say. And so sometimes because of that, we just won't talk. You know, so, I mean, that's what that's what happens with, with us as people sometimes. Sometimes we have things that we want to say to people. Sometimes we have things that we want to say, but we just don't know how to say it. So because of the simple fact that we don't know how to say it, Sometimes we just won't say it. And sometimes we treat God the same way. You know, Lord, I know I need help right now. You know, I know I'm, I'm struggling right now. I know I need something right now. I don't know what that something is, but I know I'm in need of it. But I'm at a point in my in my walk where I don't even know what to ask for. And even sometimes we feel like even even if it showed up, whatever the opportunity was, I don't even know if I would recognize it because I don't even know if I need it. Like, that's how confusing things can get. And if you haven't been there, just keep growing up. It'll come. It'll come. But sometimes we don't even know what to say. You know, and that's why this topic of, hey, guys, can you just pray for me? Sometimes you just don't know. You know, you just you just don't know what you need. But you know you have a need, but you don't know what you need. And so here, he's saying here, so we don't even know what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit itself making intercessions for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. You know, the thing about what that text says, notice it says the Spirit itself making intercession for the groanings. It doesn't say the words. It says the groanings. You know, have you ever seen somebody, I mean, I'm not talking about boo-hoo cry. I'm talking about groan cry. You know, I, I witnessed that before. It, it's... um. You feel for the person so much because you don't know what to, they're not speaking, right? They're not saying they're not saying any words. They're not they're not expressing through words how they feel. All they can feel is a is a moan. All they can feel is just their body weak. They're just they can't talk, but it's just a loud groan, and you can tell that that person's hurting, and that's that's uncomfortable to be around. To be honest, 
to be honest, that's very uncomfortable to be around. And because it's uncomfortable because of the noise, but it's also uncomfortable because you don't know how to help the person. You just don't know what to do. And so sometimes when we're put in that situation where, <clears throat> have you ever prayed before? And as you're praying and as you're having this conversation with God about how things are going right now, you know, the state of where you are, the state of what's going on in your life right now. Have you ever been sitting there and you've been praying about stuff and you just get to a point where you just like you stop and you're just like, I don't even know what to say. Like, I just don't, I don't even know anymore. You know, you just don't know. And that's the beautiful thing about having help is because the spirit itself make an intercession on our behalf when when we don't even know what to say and so sometimes it, it's just an amazing thing to know that that the father and the spirit and the son have our backs like that in prayer and this is the importance of of praying for your other brother and sometimes and i'm afraid sometimes we use we use that word prayer as a um scapegoat's the only word i can think of right now but sometimes i mean we can't use the word prayer it's just this cookie cutter thing if that makes sense sometimes when someone says can you pray for me like really pray for them you know the thing about prayer it's a two-sided relationship <clears throat> so sometimes we make prayer so cookie cutter is when someone's going through something or you see somebody visibly hurting or you know they're going through certain things in their lives you know the easy thing to say and the cookie cutter thing to say is oh i'll pray for you oh i'm praying for you because it sounds nice doesn't it it sounds comforting but i had someone come up and say um this was a while ago but you know obviously i've heard people say hey man i'm praying for you or oh, i'm praying for you oh yeah i'll pray for you like you hear people say that all the time but i heard somebody who I didn't ask for it. You know, I didn't ask for the, the prayers at all. He came up and he said, hey, last night in my prayers, um, I prayed for you by name. And I just wanted you to, I just wanted you to know that um, I prayed for you by name last night. That hit a little bit different when he said that. I was like, okay. He didn't just say it just to sound nice. He said it and he actually did it. And I didn't even ask for it. So think about it. That's what the Spirit does on our behalf. We don't even know what to ask for and this is what he needs. This is why he's hurting. This is why. This is why he's lost hope over and over. You know, it, it's just, it's a great thing to know that the spirit does that. And then look at verse 27. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit. So again, not only do we have the, the spirit speaking on our behalf, but he talking about the son that knows the hearts and knows what is the mind of the spirit makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See guys, this is a beautiful thing right here about having <clears throat> about having Jesus as our mediator. The beautiful thing about having him as our mediator is he knows what it's like to be us and he knows exactly what we need. He knows. You know, and, and it's a, it's a great thing to have Christ in the middle. And when we don't know what to say, when we don't know what to ask for, when we don't even know what we feel like we need. Think about the son coming to the father and clarifying those groanings, clarifying those needs, clarifying that hurt, clarifying, you know, how hard it is. And for him to come to the father and to truly say, I know what it feels like to walk in that man's shoes to walk in her shoes like I know like I know exactly what it feels like and so as, as we talk about this together it's just <clears throat> sometimes this is an avenue that maybe we just don't use as much with him but also with each other and that's something that for me personally as I was just thinking about it now you know that's something that you know I want to do I want to do better as well you know, be, um, you know, be decisive about my prayers, be persistent about the prayer. <clears throat> and it's, it's an amazing thing to know that not only can we pray for ourselves, 
but we can also bring the names of our friends up to our father. I mean, so the thing about it, guys, it's just sometimes, hey, man, can you guys, can y'all just pray for me? So as we look at this, not only, you know, praying when things don't make sense or <clears throat> or when things are, are difficult, like we saw in Romans, but also I think another part of prayer that's important is thanksgiving. So look at uh look at Colossians chapter four. <coughs> Excuse me, Colossians four. And let's look at verse number two. Here's a couple of verses I want to mention though. But as we talk about, hey guys, can you just pray for me? One part of prayer is yes, asking and realizing that you have a need, and asking and realizing that your friends have needs. But then another part of prayer is thanksgiving. So think about this. If you're in communication with friends or with loved ones or with your spouse, how would it feel like when every time you talk to the person, they only talk to you when they needed something? They only talk to you when it was convenient for them. They only talk to you when they had time for you. How would that make you feel? Make you feel used? Make you feel like it doesn't really mean anything? And make you feel like you're just using me because you need me right now. But think about those friends that just call just to say, man, hey, man, how you holding up? Hey, man, are you doing all right? Hey, man, is there something I can do for you? Hey, man, can I pray for you? Hey, man, you want to you want to go get lunch sometime, man? Think about those. They're not they're not with you, you know, for an agenda. They're not with you to get something out of you. They're with you because they're genuinely concerned. So. Doesn't that relationship hit a little bit different than the first one? But think about it. That's how we can treat God sometimes, God, uh, guys. is, And I found myself doing that, too, is sometimes the only time that I find myself praying to God is, is when I need him. You know, when when I need his help or when things are going right or when there's problems or issues or, you know, where there's, there's problems that I need him to solve or, or whatever that is. But sometimes instead of coming to him, obviously he wants to hear that for sure. You know, First Peter chapter 5, he cares for us. But God also wants his thanksgiving as well. He doesn't want us to just come to him as this, well, there, there's a song, you only call me when it's raining. You know, don't only don't always just call God when it's raining outside. Don't always call your friends just when it's raining for you. Maybe call for him and call on them just to, man, thank you, man. Call on the Lord. Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. I know things aren't perfect right now, and I know I have questions. I know I have concerns. I know there's problems here. I know there's issues here. I know there's trouble here. I know that. But, Lord, I just want to thank you for who you are, for what you've done, for sending your son, for loving us, for, for caring for me, for even giving me this avenue to even talk to you right now. Look, Colossians 4, 2, it says, it says to continue in prayer, but it says to continue in prayer with thanksgiving. How beautiful is that? Sometimes we can't treat God as someone to come to when it's only raining. God wants to be celebrated when the sun's out too. You know, and when we talk about, you know, praying with thanksgiving, sometimes we just have to let the Lord just thank you. <clears throat> you know, and and... Like we talk about, and I can do that better with just the people around me. Hey, man, just I appreciate what you do. You know, I appreciate, you know, your effort. You know, I appreciate everything that you're doing. You know, it, it, it's got to be balanced. It can't it can't always be coming to God and coming to people when it's raining outside. Sometimes we got to we got to show our appreciation. And, and that's a part of of growing up. So. You know, as as we as we notice this, the thing about Thanksgiving, it, it's such a wonderful thing. But, you know, it also praying with Thanksgiving, it also keeps us humble, too. It, it really does. When you really sit there and think about it, it really it really keeps us humble. <clears throat> so even in Colossians chapter two. Uh, so look at this Colossians two, verse seven, rooted up and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught abound with Thanksgiving. 
Then even Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now, here's something. This is crazy. Think about this. He says, in everything by prayer. So Romans 8 talked about praying when things are hard, right? And supplication, right? But then he noted, he, he says something else as well. In everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So maybe our prayers aren't being answered because we're only coming to him with our supplications rather than thanksgiving too. You know, sometimes we just need to make sure that we let the Lord know how much we appreciate him. You know, think about it. If you're even in, in a relationship, if you're with a person who doesn't appreciate you, how long are you going to stay? You want to feel appreciated. You all, everybody wants to feel appreciated. So if we want to feel appreciated, don't you think the person and, and the entity and the, the Lord that made us, don't you think he wants to be praised as well? So look, guys, can y'all just... Y'all just pray for me. And here's another thing. As we talk about this, and as we talk about this prayer, not only do we need to pray for each other when we're hoping against hope, not only do we have to pray for one another and, and pray for Thanksgiving and with Thanksgiving, but the last thing is pray for each other when we want to quit. You know, I think about Jeremiah 17 or Jeremiah 20. Where, where Jeremiah just wanted to quit, but the Lord was with him. You know, guys, sometimes as we walk this life, you're going to go through your ebbs and flows. You know, you'll go through your flows where things are working out. You're going to go through your flows where it just seems like everything is literally against you and nothing was meant to work out for you. Like, literally, that's what it'll feel like, 100%. And then you'll feel like, well, why is it, why is it worth going? Why is it worth you know, you, you'll start to question a lot of things. You, you'll question yourself. You'll question <clears throat> um, why you need to be so faithful. You'll question, are you in the right spot? Are you are you in the right place? Are you, are you doing the right stuff? Are you really making an impact where you are? You'll start to question a lot of things. You'll start to question a lot of things about yourself, about what you're doing, about who you are, about your impact, all these things. But when that happens, that's when you need brethren praying for you. That's when you need that's when you need brethren who really care. Say, hey man, keep going. Keep pursuing. You know <coughs> I'm reminded of Paul, you know, <coughs> in um in Philippians. You know, in Philippians chapter three, verse thirteen, you know, Paul says, Look, this is one thing I do. Forgetting those things in the past and reaching forth towards those things and reaching towards the prize. You know, he said, I press towards the mark. You know, sometimes it's, it gets hard. I'll be honest with you guys. Sometimes it gets very hard to press toward the mark. And this is another podcast that I'm working on. But sometimes you'd be like, man, am I crazy? Like, like, am I the one that's off? You know, for trying to trying to work hard trying to be the person that the Lord wants me to be. But by doing this, why does it seem like when I try to do what the Lord wants me to do, people people literally find reasons to stay away. People make reasons to stay away. Then you want to quit. Then you feel deceived by God. Then you feel deceived by, it's just, it's so many things happen and you start to question while you're pressing toward the mark, is this even worth it? You know, I heard somebody once say, <clears throat> if you never question why you're doing what you're doing, maybe it's not worth it. So maybe a part of it is actually questioning, is this, is this worth it, what I'm doing? It's tough, man. It's hard. And that's why, that's why, you know, you need, you need the prayers of those that, that love you. You need the prayers of your brethren. You need the prayers of those that that want to see you succeed because as you press toward the mark, you know, you're going to doubt yourself. You're going to wonder, am I doing the right thing? You're going to wonder, you know, is this, is this even working? You know, you'll question everything, but as you press toward the mark, 
you're going to need some faithful people and and faithful brethren to say, man, you're I know what it's like too. We're going to keep pressing. We're going to keep moving forward. And if Paul could do it, if all these other guys could do it, we can too. So, guys, I, I know this wasn't as organized as before and as the normal ones, but this was kind of just a <clears throat> conversation between us as we're talking. And, you know, and I'll pray for you, to be honest. You know, hit me up on, on you know, send a chat through Messenger, send a chat through uh, through Instagram, send a chat through wherever you can find me. If you have my number, send something there. You know, if you need help, man, I can pray for you over the phone. You know, we can pray. I'll pray for you, you know, and you you guys pray for me. You know, it's not <clears> – <throat> It's not an easy road. You know, it's it's never been an easy road, but we're all here to um to help each other and I hope that as we continue to grow and develop that that we'll um we'll ask for help and we'll ask, "Hey man, can y'all just can y'all just pray for me?" Man, I hope you guys uh you know, appreciated the podcast and I appreciate you guys for everything you do and <clears throat> I appreciate y'all support and I hope that uh we can continue to grow and learn and study together. So Lord willing, uh, I will see you guys on Monday. Maybe we'll have one with a guest this week. I don't know yet. We'll have to confirm, but we'll see. But Lord willing, I know I'll see you guys on Monday. So I appreciate it. And Lord willing, we'll see you guys then. Thanks, guys.